Under the Speaker's announced policy of January 7, 1997, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Paul, is recognized for 50 minutes as the designee of the Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If I had a uh, chance to pick a topic for my special order today, I would call it the folly of foreign intervention. We have heard very much in the last few weeks about the possibility of a war being started in the Persian Gulf. It looks like this has at least been delayed a bit. There is a temporary victory brought about by the Secretary General Kofi Annan of the United Nations in agreement with the government of Iraq. Uh, this, I think, is beneficial. At least it gives both sides more time to stop and think and talk before more bombs uh, are dropped. Before we left uh, about 10 days ago from the Congress, I think many members and much of the nation thought that within a short period of time, within a week or so, there would be additional bombing uh, by the Americans over uh, Baghdad. There were polls out at that time that said that 70% of the American people endorsed this move, something that I question, and of course I question the uh, legitimacy of dealing with policy by measuring polls anyway. I think we should do what is right, not try to decide what is right by the polls. But in this circumstance, I think the polls must have been very, very misleading. We heard a gentleman earlier uh, this evening uh, from uh, North Dakota mention when he was at home, essentially nobody was telling him that they were in favor of the war. I think most members of Congress on this past week at visiting home had the same message. And uh, certainly there was a very loud message uh, in uh, Columbus at a town hall meeting. It was written off by those who wanted to go to war and wanted to drop the bombs by saying, well, no, this was just a very noisy bunch of hippies who are opposed to the war. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of people in this country who are opposed to the war, and they're not hippies. And I think to discredit people who oppose going to, uh, and participating in an act of war and try to discredit them by saying that they belong to a hippie generation, I think uh, they are going to uh, lose out in the credibility uh, argument uh, in, in this regards. But this, uh, this debate has been going on for quite a few months. Uh, and it looks like uh, it's not resolved. Although there has been an agreement, it, it's far from a victory from either side. And it's uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat ironic about how this has come about because it seems that those of us who have been urging great caution have been uh, satisfied with at least a temporary solution, yet we're not entirely satisfied at all with the dependency on the effort by uh, the United States enforcing uh, UN uh, resolutions. In this case, I think that uh, what, what we must do is re reassess uh, the entire policy because it's policy that gets us into trouble. It is in this one instance. We did, we did not just invent uh, foreign interventionism in foreign policy. This has been going on for a long time. Uh, the first, the worst, uh, and the first egregious example, of course, was in Korea, where we went to war under the UN banner and it was the first war we didn't win, and uh, yet we continue with this same policy uh, throughout the world. And hardly can we be proud of what uh, happened in Vietnam. It seems like uh, we're having a lot more success getting along with the Vietnamese people uh, as we trade with them rather than fight with them. So there's a lot of argument against this whole principle of, uh, of foreign interventionism, involvement in, in the internal affairs of other nations, picking leaders of other countries. We were warned uh, rather clearly by our first president, uh, George Washington, that it would be best that uh, we not get involved in tangling alliances, and that we instead should talk with people and be friendly with people and trade with people. And of course, the first reaction would be, yes, but uh, uh, the person that we're dealing with is, as leader of Iraq is a monster, and therefore we can't trust him, and we shouldn't talk to him. Well, there's been a lot of monsters around the world. That the House can receive a message. The chair will receive a message. Mr. Speaker, a message from the President of the United States. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Secretary. I'm directed by the President of the United States to deliver to the House of Representatives a message in writing. Thank you. 
Uh, the chair thanks the gentleman from Texas, and the gentleman from Texas is recognized. I was saying there, are, there have been a lot of monsters in the world, and we have not treated them all the same way. Just think of the tremendous number of deaths in the, in the, in the, in the tune of, to, to the tune of millions in, uh, under Pol Pot. And, uh, and at that time, we were even an ally of his. And even the inconsistency of our policy, where in the 1980s, we actually uh, encouraged Saddam Hussein. We sold him weapons. We actually have participated in the delivery of biological uh, weapons to Hussein. At that time, we encouraged him to cross the border into Iran. Uh, we closed our eyes when poison gases were used. So all of a sudden, it's hard to understand why our policy changes. But once we embark on a policy of intervention, and it's arbitrary, we intervene when we please or when it seems to help, it seems then that we can be on either side of any issue, any time. And so often, we're on both sides of many wars. And uh, this does not serve us well. A policy design that is said to be pro-American and in the defense of this country where we follow the rules and follow the laws and we don't get involved in war without a declaration by the Congress, I think it would be very healthy not only for us as Americans, but it would be very healthy for the world as a whole. So I am very pleased that there has been at least a pause here, although uh, our troops will be maintained there and they're waiting to see if there's some other excuse that we can go in there and resume the bombing. But the whole notion that we are going to bring Hussein to his knees without uh, the cost of many American lives, I think, is, is naive. Because nobody has proposed that we go in and invade the country. There have been proposals that we just assassinate uh, Hussein, which is illegal. Uh, at least that's a, uh, acknowledged that this is an illegal act to go and, and kill another leader, although we've been involved in that, too. Uh, but people say that uh, many have argued that this, this should be our, uh, our policy now, and that is to topple Hussein. But, you know, we used the CIA in, uh, in, in Cuba uh, a few decades ago, and now it's just been revealed that our CIA botched the job. And also, we led those individuals who were trying to restore freedom to Cuba. We let them down by them assuming we would do more, and then we did less. We were very much involved in overthrowing a uh, leader in South Vietnam uh, right before the uh, rampant escalation of the war there. That did not uh, serve us well. And then there's another example of our CIA uh, putting a government in charge over in Iran. And that's when we put the Shah in. But this did not bring peace and stability to the region. It brought us hostage takings and hostility and hatred and, and threat of terrorism in this country. So although uh, many will make the moral cause for doing good around the world, uh, there is no moral justification if we are going to follow the laws of this land and try to stick to the rules of providing a national defense uh, for us and a a strong foreign policy. Well, will the gentleman yield? I yield to the gentleman from Tennessee. I just wanted to uh, take just a moment to say how much I appreciate uh, many of the points that uh, you are making, particularly uh, in regard to the folly of much or many of our foreign interventions in recent years. I remember about three years ago reading on the front page of the Washington Post that we had our troops in Haiti picking up garbage and settling domestic disputes. Now, picking up garbage for Haitians and settling their domestic disputes should not be a mission of the American military. The Haitians should, should pick up their own garbage. Uh, then a few weeks ago, I heard that we had our troops in Bosnia giving rabies shots to dogs. Uh, the, the Bosnians should give uh, their own rabies shots to their own dogs. That should not be a mission of the American military. And this business of turning our military into international social workers is something that I think the overwhelming majority of Americans are strongly opposed to. But, and, and this really sad thing is, is that we have spent many, many billions of hard-earned tax dollars in recent years in Haiti, Rwanda, Somalia, Bosnia, now in Iraq. And I said on the floor of this House uh, a couple of weeks ago, why the rush to war in Iraq? Why the rush to war? Why the eagerness to send young American men and women into harm's way? Uh, the American people were not clamoring for war then. 
They are even more so not clamoring for war now. We, uh, going to war should be the most reluctant decision that we make. We should go to war only when there is no other reasonable alternative. I saw George Stephanopoulos on television a few days ago, and he said that uh, uh, even in World War II, we had some people who were opposed to World War II. But I can tell you, the day after Pearl Harbor, uh, the Senate voted 82 to nothing, and the House voted 388 to 1 to go to war against Japan. But Japan had attacked us at that time. And it was a totally different situation from the one we face in Iraq. You can say any bad thing that you want to about Saddam Hussein, and I would agree with you. But I can t also tell you that uh, he was greatly weakened by the first Gulf War. He has been weakened even more by the sanctions since then. I heard one commentator say that even the Italian army could beat Saddam Hussein at this time. The, th the threat is not there, and for us to, to spend all these these hundreds of millions of dollars deploying all our troops over there in the Middle East is a tremendous waste of money. It's not something that should be done. We should try to be friends with all nations in the world that will let us be friends, but that doesn't mean we need to keep sending billions and billions of dollars overseas. Much of, the, uh, much of this money and many of these interventions are creating great resentment toward us. I read recently that uh, uh, in regard to the International Monetary Fund, that, uh, that many of these countries, they, know, they feel like we're behind the International Monetary Fund interventions in Southeast Asia, and, the, and they're requiring some of these countries and peoples to do things that they don't want to do, and, and really all they're doing is bailing out big banks and big multinational companies, and it's creating great resentment toward us. President Kennedy, and I'll, I'll uh, stop with just two other points. Uh, one is that Tony Snow said in a column a few days ago, he said in regard to the situation in Iraq, he said, we're about to achieve the worst of all possible worlds. He said, we're about to alienate our European allies and our Arab allies and achieve nothing of military significance. But President Kennedy in 1961 said, we, and I want to read this quote, he said, we must face the fact that the U.S. is neither omnipotent nor omniscient that we are only 6% of the world's population, that we cannot impose our will upon the other 94%, that we cannot right every wrong or reverse each adversity, and that therefore there cannot be an American solution to every world problem. That was President Kennedy in 1961, and the only change is, is that now we're slightly less than 5% of the population of the world instead of the 6% that we were then. I think President Kennedy was exactly right. There cannot be an American solution to every world problem. Let's be friends with every country, but let's not try and impose our will and create great resentment toward this country. Let's have a foreign policy, a trade policy, an economic policy that puts this country and its taxpayers and its workers first, even if that's not politically correct or are fashionable to say at any particular given time in history. And I thank the gentleman for yielding to me.